Hey, this is Dr. Brandi Maynard from GiftedResources.com. I help teachers and parents help their gifted students reach their ultimate potential. Today we're talking about visual math. Last week we discussed visual spelling, and this is very similar. It is location memory, a technique that has techniques underneath it, and it's all rolled into one. Let's get started. I don't know about you, but fourth grade is a little stressful for a parent because my son and I are learning his multiplication facts. And if you're a teacher in the early years or you have children of your own who've gone through fourth grade, you know how difficult it can be for them to memorize those basic math facts, whether it's addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. And you can do that with this visual math strategy. Let's take a look. So this is our kitchen. This is Riley and I tonight actually and we were learning Riley's threes. So we began by putting up the flashcards around the room. Three times one equals three. That was on the cupboard. Three times two equals six on another cupboard. Three times three equals nine on the microwave. Three times four equals twelve and so on. And we went in a clockwise direction around the kitchen with his math facts. You'll notice the math facts are just above his eyebrow because you want your student to be able to access the back part of their brain. So just a little bit above their eye level so they don't have to tilt their head, but they can just tilt their eyes up. So I was talking with Riley and we began on three times one. And I said to him, okay Riley, this is what it's going to look like. Three times one equals three. So he said it aloud, three times one equals equals three. And then I had him close his eyes and say it again, visualizing it. Three times one equals three. And then finally, you'll notice down here, there's a flat surface. He wrote with his finger, three times one equals three. And we moved around the room three times two, three times three, and we did that process for each one of the math facts that he created. And then I asked him to come over and lay his head down on the cabinet on this countertop here. So he laid his head down and I said to him, three times six. And he said, oh, I don't know. I said, it's okay. I don't need you to know the answer. I just need you to tell me where it is in the room. Three times six. And he pointed to the refrigerator behind me. Great. Three times 10, he pointed over near the window. Three times three over near the microwave. And he was remembering this, those location facts. I said, okay, let's see if you can get the answers this time. Three times five equals 15. He knew that one. Three times eight, pause, pause. He wasn't quite sure what that one was. So we went back through the process one more time and I told him, I just need you to remember the location. So just go from flashcard to flashcard and remember the location. And then I would say to him, three times eight equals 24. And he would point to the cupboard three times three equals nine, he would point to the microwave. I said, perfect. Now you're going to do it. Three times seven, and he said three times seven equals 21, and he pointed above the crock pot. I said three times four, he said three times four equals 12, and pointed to the door. And we went through that process. Gave him a high five, celebrated his accomplishment, and then I said, okay, now I'm going to ask you to touch each one of these. And so he said, all right, I'm going to do this. And it became a game. Three times eight. And he went over three times eight equals 24. And he was just touching the different flashcards as we went through. So he knew the location. He knew the, he was really cementing those answers in. I said, all right, now what I'd like you to do is put your head down and I'm going to give you the answer. I said, 27. He replied three times nine equals 27 and pointed to the cabinet. I said, excellent, 18. He pointed behind him, three times six equals 18. He had those facts memorized. He memorized them by putting them into his mind, focusing on them, saying them out loud, and also writing them on a flat surface in front of him. And this, in a nutshell, is the visual math technique. The thing that you do need to remember, again, is the, the math cards need to be just above eye level, this is location memory, so you want it to be a location that the students and the children are familiar with. You want it to be a different location in the room for different facts. So for us, the kitchen is our threes. 
our four fact families going to be right around the corner from the dishwasher into the dining area. All of our fours, four times one, four times two, and we'll go around. Our fives are going to be in the living room. And the six are a little tricky for Riley. So the sixes are going to be in our family room downstairs. The sevens are also tricky. Another spot that he spends some time is in his bedroom. So the sevens will be in his bedroom and the eights in the bathroom. And I will start in one area. Generally, I start over near a light switch or whatever the main door is. And then we go in a clockwise direction, making sure that the facts are written clearly and they're just above that area right above their eyebrows. I leave these facts up for a week. I may also, after the end of that week, just turn the facts over or get rid of the answer down below and give them to the child and see if they can do it without the answers. And usually they can. Last thing I want you to do is pretend like you're back in high school and turn your locker combination. Go ahead and turn it to the right 10 and back to 24 and forward to 7. You want to review this with your children 10 minutes after they do it, 24 hours later, and 7 days later. And that will move the learning from the short-term memory into the long-term memory. The magic code is 10, 24, 7. So 10 minutes after Riley and I did this, I revisited it. And we revisited it over dinner with Dad. And I said, just give him any threes that you want. And he was just firing off threes. And Riley was answering them back. It was beautiful. 24 hours later, tomorrow at dinner, we're going to do exactly the same thing. I did do it with Riley before bed tonight. The last thing that children think about before they go to bed is what they process when they're in their deep sleep throughout the night. And so just merely mentioning it, no flashcards, none of that, just mentioning it to him, maybe spending, oh, I think we maybe spent two minutes on it. That's what he's processing all night long as he sleeps. And then seven days later, so turning these flashcards over and having the child either go to the room and point, most likely they're going to know them by then. I would tend to do maybe threes and fours together, fives and sixes over the course of a week. If they are a little bit challenging for the students, you may just want to do all of the sevens over the course of the week, and I think you'll be very pleasantly surprised by the results. Again, this is Dr. Brandy Maynard. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you joining me week after week. I'd like to invite you to join our Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash 21 gifted resources. If you haven't yet signed up for our newsletter, we have these tips and tricks every week. We have teaching strategies for gifted kids as well as different technology strategies you, sh you can use in the classroom. Remember, gifted strategies that we use with gifted kids will benefit all children. Thank you again. Bye for now.